know, there's this kind of feeling that in order to use Raycast, you gotta fit a certain mold, you know? And it's so not true. Like you gotta be a power user, you gotta be a developer, you know? It's like, man, like anybody can use Raycast. There's just so much you can do as a content creator, social media manager, tech founder, to leverage your productivity and navigate your Mac in a better way than you would normally. What does a work day look like for you? Yeah, it's chaotic. <laughs> <Let's start with laughs> but I would say in a day to day, I definitely use my Mac in a lot of different ways. One, there are two tools from the same company that I love, which are Notion Calendar and Notion itself. And Raycast itself helps me to navigate between those two tools in like throughout the whole day. As I do have to communicate quite a lot with different people that speak different languages. I do use the translate feature over here on Raycast just to make sure that I fully understand what is being said, what is the context and all that. Should I have done this by actually going to Raycast and not using my hotkey? Well, the fact that you use the hotkey already shows that you're a power <laughs> user, but I love it though. I love it how you're just like, what, what was your hotkey by the way? Uh, option T. Oh, nice. That's exactly the same one I have. I use translation all the time and I can see that you are actually using the translate extension, right? So this is not built in with Raycast. If you are Raycast Pro, you have a built-in translator, which gives you a slightly nicer UI, but we're also implementing a bunch of placeholders there that can make your life even easier by, say, pressing your hotkey and already taking that highlighted text and using that as context. So it's gonna even it's gonna make it even quicker for you. But another thing that I'm curious, I found myself using AI more and more oh. for translation. And I wanted to ask you if that's the case with you as well. At times, like, hey, what is this word? I go straight to here because it's just easy and simple. I mean, it's what we've been doing for the past, I don't know, 20 years, basically. But if I have a text or an email and some more, let's say, complicated wording, then I definitely go to my Raycast here and I go to the ChatGPT extension. So I don't have Raycast Pro, so I inserted my own API key here and I go straight to ask a question so I can actually paste the text and like, hey, I'm a Brazilian Portuguese speaker, native speaker. Can you translate this to me in a more, let's say, digestible way? Because one, if it's a legal text, I don't want to read the legal way in Brazilian Portuguese. Yeah, that's very cool. And um, I find it's, it's cool that you mentioned that, you know, you don't have Raycast Pro, so you're using the extension for ChatGPT. And I think this is a really good point to note um, for everybody listening here that, Obviously, if you've got Raycast Pro, you get this thing out of the box and you don't have to manage subscriptions in other places. But if you don't, you can still use these services because of our open source extension store. Oh, and I see that you use Raycast in the compact mode. We don't see that very often. I love the compact mode. Like so at times I have like two, three tabs open and I, I just want to go like have quick access to Raycast, some apps and commands and also I use a lot of the, the hotkeys itself, so I don't usually see all of this like very often, like the, the Raycast itself. Very cool. I might try that. I'm too used to having Raycast as the normal mode, but I'm going to try compact mode for the next few days. One of the other ways when I am actually jamming on docs and writing stuff or reviewing stuff for my team, I just want to have something play in my ears. So. I go to my Raycast, so I actually go on my Spotify so I can browse one, my library, and I can see all the, the playlists. You can see that I have a lot of Brazilian stuff in there. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's just a, an easy way for me to kind of like start jamming tunes and find what I like in an easy way without even having to open the app on itself. I do like the Pomodoro timer as well. If you're a dev route, if you're a developer, you cannot have this gigantic slots of time where you're still being focused. Like you end up losing focus, losing track of what you're doing, notification pops in, you get distracted. So I like to set this for myself as a way to take a step back 
can actually make sure that I'm focused and fully focused on something for at least 25 minutes. We do jobs now that require quite a lot of context switching sometimes, right? So, I don't know, sometimes I'm writing a document in Notion and I need to go and fetch a reference from Twitter. There's somebody tweeted this and I want to use that as, you know, as part of the content that I'm putting together. And the moment I go to Twitter and I switch that context, I'm distracted. The whole kind of distraction that's pulling us from every angle and the fact that we have to switch context all the time can really hurt our productivity, right? That's one way that Raycast is helping me personally a lot. And I'm not just saying that because I work at Raycast. Before even using Raycast, I was using Alfred. Uh, but the idea is that I can be in one place and I can gather or I can get information from somewhere else without having to go there. I think Pomodoro, in a way, is not exactly the same thing that I'm saying here, but it is in the sense that, you know, it just keeps you focused for that time. When the timer goes off, you can give yourself a break and go and get that dopamine hit and maybe check Twitter or whatever it is that you like doing, right? Hell yeah, do a little scrolling on TikTok, never a crime. Ah, oh, you, you like TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> can I dive into hotkeys here? Yeah, let's go. So, so I have set up a hotkey for my Notion, which is option W, and I can see my <laughs> DevRel board and my team's board I see here, all the content that we got to create, all of our boards, what is on track, what is not, and some of our team boards here as well. And then as I need to dive in a meet, to a meeting and kind of actually uh, make sure that I have all things set up, I use another hotkey, which is option C, to see my calendar. And as I go through a meeting, I use option, I think N, to save all my notes, action items, uh, what I need to do on a particular day, what I need to reveal. I like how you just navigate everything through hotkeys. Uh, one thing that I couldn't help but notice is that when you open up your calendar, it oh, was yeah. using like half of the screen right <laughs> to the right. So how, yeah. how did that happen? Did you manually resize no. it and put it there or? No, no, no. I have a hot, another hotkey option, the option right to actually set that up. And I do use a lot of the window management from uh, Raycast as well. Nice. I'm actually thinking of building an extension for an IDE that is not listed here. So I see that we have the IDE and all the, the commands for actually using VS Code. But VS Code is not my main ID on a day-to-day -day basis. I do use quite often Cursor. And from Cursor here, I can only open the application, but I cannot see any of the projects I'm working on or anything from it uh, directly on Raycast. I think that's a great idea, you know, to uh, think about an extension that can give you all of those little helpers for Cursor. I've not actually used it yet. I've seen great things about it online, and I'm curious to try it. I just find that sometimes changing uh, my editor, it's one of those things that takes me a little bit of time and dedication. It's a learning curve. You can, you, yes, I, I see what you mean there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm saying that, but funnily enough, a lot of people that I talk to who are currently using Spotlight or Alfred, they say the same thing about switching to Raycast. So uh, we're all in the same boat here. Let's build that extension. I think uh, I would love to see you trying to build it. If you need help, hit me up. Uh, I'm sure you'll be fine because those things are usually quite straightforward. Because the extension ecosystem is all open source, then there will be plenty of extensions that you can always just re uh, use as reference. What does it take for a developer to get on board to recast the documentation and actually go from zero to one into building and deploying a new extension on Raycast. Raycast is a native Swift app, right? And initially, if you wanted to build an extension, you'd have to build it in Swift. We realized that that, although Swift is not, say, the most complex language, it's still a pretty big barrier to entry. We thought if we use JavaScript to author the extensions instead of Swift, we could have way more people contributing. So that's what the team did. They decided to make a React API, which under the hood converts to Swift. So everything that you write still being rendered in Swift. And so it's really performant, it's really fast. But to make things even simpler, 
we created a command that comes with Raycast that if you search for it right now, it's called create extension. And when you go into this command, it will give you some templates that you can choose from. And if you take that, that's gonna kind of bootstrap the whole thing for you. And it does it already using Raycast. I love this because it's using awesome. Raycast to build a Raycast extension, you know what I mean? Uh, this is awesome. Do you have any advice on how we could maybe lower the barrier to entry even more? One thing that I would like to see and something I wanted to jam with you about is definitely how can we build some incentives for developers to actually get kind of like excited to build more extensions on Raycast. I know that we are building a lot of things by the community to the community, but how can we level that up? Maybe put up, let's say, a uh, request list on, let's say, a landing page on Raycast and make a little hackathon based on the community's request. So I would love to see some kind of challenge or incentive for actually bringing people together and excited to build on top of Raycast. Well, look, if anybody is interested in a uh, Raycast hackathon, let us know. And maybe that's something we'll try and do this year. Why not? Why not? It was really great to have you on to see how you use Raycast with a very unique perspective. Thanks for all the advice you've given us. Amazing. It's a pleasure to be here. Great to finally put a face to the name and get to have a cool conversation with you. And yes, looking forward to building cool stuff with you and also continue being connected to you and the Raycast community.